Let us bow and pray. Let us bow and pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the very rising of the sun and the going down of the same. God, we come before your presence because we need you, and there is no other. God, you said we are blessed because of who you are, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for the rising of the sun and the going down of the same. Thank you for this church and these your people, this pastor and your servants that you have called for this time, this place, this moment. Thank you for we celebrate the women of God here at Macedonia, and thank you for blessing us to be a part of this experience. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God can say, Amen. Amen. It is good to be in God's house one more time. It's another day's journey, and we are certainly glad about it. You all look good in your pink, male or female. We bless God for this opportunity of worship. This day is not a day that was promised to us, but it was a day that God gave us. And for that, I think we ought to give God some praise. <laughs> the air that you just breathed just those few moments ago was breath that we were not promised. And for that, I think we should give God Because you were able to just clap your hands and to lift your voice and to give God glory, I think we should give God some praise. In fact, the Bible says everything that hath breath. If you're not dead, not in the graveyard, I dare you to give our good God some worthy praise. He's worthy of all the praise. From the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, God's name is to be praised. Looking as good as you look, you ought to give God some double praise. Look what God has done for Wilmington. We ought to give God some praise. Last year at this time, we, did, we didn't do this service, did we? No, because God had allowed some things to come through. But look where God has brought you from. Yes. And that's not the end of the story. God is still blessing. God is still pouring out his anointing. God is still putting things in place. God is still opening doors. There's someone here today that's not going to leave the same way that they came in. Somebody needs a financial blessing. And I devil dog dare anybody today to bless somebody who needs to be a blessing, who needs to receive a blessing. Why? Because when you bless someone else, God blesses you over and over and over again. Can I be prophetic and not pathetic just for a moment? In the Bible, God talks about all the different things that happened to the people when they did what they were supposed to do. And when they didn't do what they were supposed to do, these other things happened to them. Don't be those other people. Be the one that is obedient to the Spirit of God. And if you are obedient to the Spirit of God, God said he would pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. That's in the scripture. That's the text. That's what the Bible says. And if he pours out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive, it will be so much in abundance that it will be running over. Running over. I don't think you understand running over. Anybody want a running over blessing? Running over. When you walk to your right, you're running to blessings. When you walk to your left, you're running to blessings. You're back up and back up into blessings. You walk forward and you just walk forward into blessings. Everywhere you turn, everywhere you go, everything that you do, everything that you say will end up being a blessing. God wants to be a blessing to Macedonia and to the people that are here today. Will you please be obedient to the spirit of the Lord and let the Lord use you in his own way. 
Bless God for your pastor, Dr. Henry and First Lady Henry and this opportunity to come and to worship with you all today. And Macedonia, you all are a beautiful church family. You all have a beautiful spirit. I love you to life and I pray God's blessing continuously upon your lives. And we look forward to coming back in a couple of weeks for the General Baptist State Convention where I'm privileged to serve as your parliamentarian, the first female to hold this office. Praise God. And that's not the end of the story, so get ready for the next chapter. There is a word from the Lord. Our scripture text has already been read from Acts, the third chapter, verses 1 through 6. Keep that in mind. Then flip over to Acts, the first chapter, and the eighth verse. The English Standard Version says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This morning, our moment and thought of meditation is the power of power. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, ushers. Music ministry. Our subject this morning is power. Dunamis. We exemplify power in many ways. Perhaps in our hopes to gain it, to take it away, or to maintain it, we are we're dealing with power. Social media and the World Wide Web and radio and television show us exactly how to exhort power in some form of fashion. Look at our television shows, Blackish, and How to Get Away with Murder, Empire, Black Panthers and Avengers, and anything that Steve Harvey puts out deals with power. Then there's this medium, violent, temptatious, thuggish, gangster family show that we watch on stars called Power. For there's a man, AKA Ghost, has the power, loses the power, gets the power back, takes the power, releases the power, and somehow, no matter what he's been through, seems to control the power. However, the character in this story is not the first of its kind. Many of us have watched on the big screen and in comic books and movies that have portrayed influences of vessels of power. Growing up, we used to look at movies like Wonder Woman, The Green Hornet, Zorro, Tonto, and The Lone Ranger. Today, those characters do remain iconic, but we can add other characters to them, even characters that have Gone on, gone on astray, Tony Stark, the Iron Man, the, we won't see him anymore, and the American uh, gangster. And there was some dude that drank some green juice, and we call him the Hulk. But then there are long-lasting superheroes like Batman and Superman. Batman and Superman have been in our vision for a long time. And this popular comic strip and movie characters consists of a character named Bruce Wayne. He's a human being who develops a caveman persona and becomes the guise of Batman. He's dressed in a black cape and mask and fully loaded with bat weapons and the Batmobile. And power that he bestowed upon him is in a facade with a mask. But that character, Superman, is quite different. He was born in power. Superman, his facade, his mask is not used to reveal his power, but somehow it hides his power and shows his humanity. So instead of a mask, he adorns a pair of glasses and he becomes Clark Kent. Both Batman and Superman have an abundance of power, but neither one of them have ultimate power. 
They have superhuman power uh, that, that on the television is displayed that they can do anything and everything. But those two characters have a weakness. Batman had the imperfections of just being human. Superman had weakness with, he was weak for Lois Lane, and this green stuff that they call kryptonite made them weak, made them lose power. And if you remember watching the 216 movie Batman versus Superman, you found that Batman and Superman were clashing over different philosophies about what kind of heroism was needed to protect the world. And however, this duo would soon come together co to confront the nefarious billionaire Lex Luthor and an evil villain named Doomsday. Superman would fight this monstrous evil entity, but the only way for him to destroy this creature was to pierce it with an arrow made of, guess what, kryptonite. The very thing which would take away Superman's power, take away his authority, his advantage, and put him in his own grave. Superman would no longer have his power. No more up, up, and away. No more it's a bird, it's a plane. No more Superman. The world was experiencing the loss of a hero, and the world would be without his power at the grave. Or is it? What is the world going to do without power? Well, you got to catch that movie, Justice League, if you want to find out what happened in the rest of the movie. Let's get a clear understanding of what power is. Merriam-Webster defines power as the ability or act to produce an effect. There are all kinds of power that is dispersed in our universe today. There's electrical power. There's power in physics. And there's calculus power. But the real power comes from God. And it's much more illuminating. It's ubiquitous. It's, it's a kind of power that's seated within itself, seated within God's, because he is ultimate. He's consuming. He's sovereign. He's all glory. He's all powerful. He's everything to everyone. He's everywhere at all times. He is who he is and was who he was and going to be who he's going to be at all times because he is God. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's not going to stop being. Being God just because some folk don't want him to be God. He can never stop being himself because he is himself. He's so much of himself that even his errors are correct. And if his errors are correct, when God makes a mistake, he's still showing out. First Chronicles 29, 11 tells us that yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. In other words, power belongs to God. He is the power of all powers. He's the power that makes the lights shine in the sky. He's the power that makes the breath come in our body. He's the power that allows you to be able to move and to have your being. He is the power of all powers. Uh, there is no other power that can beat his power. No power in the White House can beat God's power. No power in the church can beat God's power. No power on your job can beat God's power. No power in your home can beat God's power. God is power. He's the strength. He's my strength. Strength like no other. He's our strength. But look at our text. We go to a story that deals with these preachers. They ain't nothing but two broke preachers and a crippled man at a gate. Here's how this story played out. They've been endowed with the Holy Spirit, power. And these disciples begin to share the good news of Jesus and help those that are lost, helping them to find salvation. Soon after Jesus was taken up into heaven, his disciples began to preach and he had told them. And they stood up in the streets. They came up in the temple and spoke up in the church and spoke to the people all the words that Jesus had given them. 
And although they could no longer see Jesus, they knew that he was with them, knew that he had given them great power. But one day, Peter and John, these disciples, these preachers, were going to the temple for the afternoon hour of prayer, which was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And they walked across the street to the court of the Gentiles to a porch called Solomon. In front of that porch was the principal entrance of the temple through a gate which is called Beautiful. In front of this gate, they saw a lame man sitting there sitting there waiting for somebody to come by and to give him some assistance. This lame man had never walked in all his life. He was poor and his friends carried him there every day to the very same place. And there he sat hoping that somebody going to the church house uh, might take pity on him and give him a little money. Uh, can you imagine sitting there at the church, uh, folks sitting at Macedonia or whatever church it may be, wherever you are, and someone is waiting there to get something from somebody. This man had never walked, uh, uh, didn't have anything in his pocket, uh, didn't know where his next meal was going to come from, didn't know where he was going to sleep that night. All he knew that he had a couple of friends that would pick him up and bring him to the gate called Beautiful at the church house and folk would walk by him and not give him anything, yet he had some hope that somebody was going to do something. And around the corner, across the street, come two broke preachers coming to the church house to give a little prayer unto God. And when they get to the church house, they see this man sitting by that beautiful gate, broke down, busted, and disgusted. And he's reaching out his hands, hoping that he can get a little something from them. Peter and John look at him and said, look at us. We're nothing but two broke preachers, but just look at us. We don't have silver and gold like the apostles and bishops in other places, but what we do have, we're going to share it with you, and when we share it, you'll be able to do more with it than you can with the money and the silver and the gold that we don't have, but such as we have, I tell you right now I decree and declare by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost by the power of Jesus the man from Nazareth the one that walked on the sea the one that parted the waters the one that turned bread water into wine the one that took two five two fishes and five loaves of bread and made a feast fit for a king the same one that's able to do anything but fail says take up your bed and walk this lame man at this gate sitting there hoping that Peter and John were, were going to give them him something but he said I don't have anything but what I got I'm giving it to you and, and all you got to do is take up your bed and walk what happened to the lame man? Peter reached out his hand, grabbed him and helped them up, gave him some hope for his deliverance, gave him some help, gave him help in a time of need. No, Peter and John didn't have what they needed. We walking around here thinking that we got to have this, that, and the third because we want to help somebody, but we ain't going to give them but a couple of dollars anyway. You know somebody's house got burned out, somebody got flooded, somebody lost everything that had, but we're going to look in our bank account where we got five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand 15, 20,000 dollars, and we're going to write them a check for 25 dollars, but that's the best that we can do. We don't pay our tithes, we don't pay our offerings, we don't do what we're supposed to do yet. We want God to bless us over and over again. God says, if you want me to bless you, then do what I tell you to do. Help the poor. Help those that can't help themselves. When you walk by the man that's sitting by the side of the road, holding his son, talking about I lost everything I had, help him out with the best that you
you can. No, we don't take cash anymore, but you ought to put something in your pocket, put something in your car so that you can help somebody sometime. No, you don't have silver and gold, but you got the power of God with you. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Tell them that the Lord is real, that God will work things out for them, and then take them to get something to eat. Take them to buy them some clothes. Whatever you need to do, do it for the glory of God. Then Peter and John stood up for all these People that gather together to look and to be nosy and to, to ask questions. Why is this man walking? How, how did he get this strength in his legs? He's never walked before. His friends brought him to this gate every day. And here he is running around, leaping and screaming and giving praise unto God. What in the world is going on? Well, Peter stood up before all these people and began to speak to them. He said, why are you looking at us and wondering why this man has his eyes on God and why he has this power that he has? Uh, this power did not come from us, uh, but it came from the God of Abraham, uh, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, uh, and has in his own way shown the power and the glory of his son, Jesus. Uh, well, while Peter was speaking and preaching and, and testifying to the goodness of God, the priest and the captain of the temple and the rulers came upon them because they got angry. And, and Peter said, they said, Peter, you, we're going to lay hold on you and John and put you in the jailhouse because uh, people are listening to you and they're coming to you. And we don't need them to cause chaos uh, in the midst of our stuff. Uh, also, Annas and Caiaphas and the high priest got together and they brought Peter and John and set them before the company and said the lame man that was with you, uh, you healed him. How and by what power did you do this? Uh, Peter spoke boldly and said I need you rulers of Israel, uh, the people and the elders, uh, the saints and the ain'ts, the ones that think they know everything. Uh, you're asking about a good deed uh, done to this man uh, who was helpless, uh, how he was made well, I tell you like I told everybody else, by the power and the authority of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you put to death on a cross, but whom God raised from the dead, it is his power, by his power, this man has been made whole. They didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. So, so they said, Peter, John, you and your disciples, all y'all over there in Macedonia, don't be talking about Jesus. Don't let, don't let nobody else know about Jesus because when you do, we're going to have to put you in jail. And if somebody comes to you and tells you that you're going to be locked up for years and for days and for months and weeks and hours because you're speaking about the goodness of the Lord, why don't you just tell them, lock me up? Throw away the key. Because even if you lock me up, it won't stop my praise. It won't stop my glory, hallelujah. It won't stop me saying, let me tell them how I'm blessed. Because every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Peter told them, whether it's right to obey you or to obey God, you can be the judge. But as for ourselves, we cannot keep silent. We must speak about what we've seen and what we've heard and what Jesus has told us. In other words, you cannot stop the power. The rulers were afraid to do any harm to Peter and John because they knew that the people praised God. They knew that the people had worked hard for what they had and they were giving honor to God and they didn't want to do any harm to them because they didn't want the people to do any harm to them. So they let them go. They said, we'll get them after a while. The moral of this story is it's about the power and who has the power and what kind of power and who yields to the power. Peter and John had been endowed with godly power, power that does not die, power that does not dissipate, 
power that does not self-destruct or fizzle out, a power chosen by the chosen. Yes, haters will rise, and the only one choosing the godly power, they will talk about you and try to criticize and try to take you down. But misunderstood as it is, this power cannot be dwindled. This power cannot be understood. Isaiah talked about that power, said there's no searching of understanding that power. In other words, you can't figure out the power, but they that wait upon the power shall renew their power, shall mount up with wings as eagles. So when people get upset over your power, over your anointing, over what God has poured into you, Please understand that they're just being jealous. And just because they are jealous doesn't mean that the power will stop. No matter what comes on, you're still going to walk. You're still going to move. You're still going to receive what God has for you. Because God is going to bless you in spite of yourself and in spite of others. Anybody besides me? the power. The songwriter said, I got the power. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I have the power because when I didn't have the power or I didn't know that I had the power, I didn't do anything with it. But now that I got it, I got a new walk. I got a new talk. I can clap my hands now. I can lift up God. I can look at my enemies and pray for them in spite of what they have done to me. I can look at the hills from which cometh my help because I know my power comes from the Lord. When I look back over all of my things that I've been through and I look where God has brought me, I, I get excited. Yes, I got a whole lot of things on that resume or that bio, but none of those things came to me but by the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't even lift my hands without God saying so. I can't even move my feet without God saying so. Anybody eat some breakfast this morning? Able to chew it? Able to digest it? Able to give it back when it needs to give back? God is doing some blessing things even in our body. We can't do those things except by the power of God. God is power. He's the power of power. I told you the story of Superman in the beginning, how he lost his power and he was put in the grave. But you had to watch the movie very carefully. For it's at the grave that loyal and devoted Superman watchers find some hope at the grave. You see, if you look at the end of the movie, Superman is dead. There is no more power. The S on his chest has disappeared. There's no more Clark Kent. Lois Lane is sad. Devoted, loyal watchers are looking because we don't get part three, four, five, and ten of Superman. But at the end of the movie, Superman is in the grave. And if you look at the casket, before it is laid down in the grave, the dirt begins to move. And because the dirt moves, you know that Superman has the opportunity to come back. What are you saying, preacher? Power does not go away, especially godly power. It cannot be destroyed. You can put it in a grave, but it will rise again. You can slow the power down, 
but you can't kill the power. You can normalize dysfunctional circumstances, but you can't destroy the power. You can put some power in the White House and let it be abused, but you can't kill the power. You can kiss the power on the cheek for 30 pieces of silver, but you can't kill the power. Ah, the power can be arrested uh, one Thursday night, uh, but you still can't kill the power. Uh, the power said, I'll lay down my life uh, for a friend, uh, but you still can't kill the power. Ah, uh, uh, you can beat the power beyond recognition, uh, but you still can't kill the power. Uh, you can dress the power up uh, with a crown of thorns, uh, a robe on his back, uh, and a scepter in his hand, but you still can't kill the power. You can stretch him wide and hang him high, but you still can't kill the power. You can put nails in his hands and nails in his feet, but you still can't kill the power. The power can hang from the sixth to the ninth hour, but you can't kill the power. The power can be pierced in his side. Out come blood and water, but you still can't kill the power. The power can be put in a borrowed tomb, but early, early Sunday morning, the power will get up with all power in his hand. Batman and Superman are fictitious characters, but we have the reality of our own superhero, Jesus the Christ. War between good and evil been going on for a long time. Satan does his worst and God does his best. That's why I'm glad that God sent his only begotten son that whosoever includes you and I whosoever would believe it in him would not die but have everlasting everlasting life I don't know about you but aren't you glad that Jesus took our old kryptonite pierced it in his side put it in a tomb and got up with all power in his hand. Now, church, I got to tell you one more thing. Then I'll take my seat. The power still works. It works. It works. It works through the blood. The blood has power that reaches to the highest and flows to the lowest. The power will not stop, but the power will keep on. More than the Energizer Bunny, it'll keep going, going, and going. Anybody glad for the power? Give God praise for the power. Power over here, I dare you to give God praise. Power over here. I dare you to give God praise. Power in the middle. I dare you to give God praise. Y'all got the power. Give God praise. Think about the power. Power. Holy Ghost power. You got it. I got it. And he's good. He's all right. He's all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to my seat. But I want you to know. I've got, I've got, I've got the power, the power, the power.